Do we have any idea? Could we have any idea of the nature of and the re our relationship to the celestial spheres? Do you follow my question on that? This is Rain Griffin. On this channel and through my work, we look at inter interdisciplinary study of living creative intelligence and human heritage. This is going to be a lengthy talk today. It's the early morning, pre-dawn hour. You might be able to hear other creatures waking up. You can faintly maybe see the silhouette of some trees and some houses. It will get lighter, but I thought I wanted to have as little artificial light as possible to begin this talk. You may or may not Actually, I just realized I do have my light on. My camera flash it just doesn't illuminate very much. So back to the question. How could we know the nature our relationship to the celestial spheres. And the implied premise of a living school or our interdisciplinary study of living creative intelligence and human heritage. That of the cosmos of human experience is that living a life that honors our heritage and the born organs of our body and their native capacity when deprived of most of the conveniences of a modern cybernetic industrial society to make direct contact and enjoy a functional correspondence with every corresponding organ of heaven and earth, the nature and purpose of any part of the creation can be as easy as 2 plus 2. Easier than 2 plus 2. <laughs> what is the nature of illumination? Well, let's go to some of the idioms of our language, of whether you see, do you see what I am saying? Or somebody seems like a bright light. We say when someone passes away that a bright light faded from the world. But actually the opposite is true. When people pass away, we get a rush of their illumination, their brilliance. It is only that our minds are acculturated to be averse to, or to reserve itself from, the brilliance not of just of others, and, and we do sense it still, but also of the cosmic strata of that brilliance in our own brilliance. And the basis of all the infinitely familiar correspondence, mother to child, almighty feminine to almighty masculine, of every dimension of life. So again, man just makes this harder. Man has created death, a way of life that is totally disoriented to life. Accelerating untimely disorientation to life, and then coming to find it almost euphoric to keep doing the same thing. Because bereft of respect for their native spirit and volition, children then seek the control conferred upon them by these self-immolating drugs and cults of a society in a perpetual bloody decline. So that, in a paragraph or two, traces some of the contours, some of the circumference of what we take to be the world and our place within it today. Man's is an ebullient radiance, that of an unbounded intelligence 
coursing through the seasons, through our veins, through our words, admitted by the clouds and by our mouths alike. So I leave it to you to deduce the equation, the correspondence of our energies and how we choose to apply them to more or less effect, to more or less restriction to that radiance, that fund of native cosmic bliss intelligence. With respect to the world around us, the seeds about their congress with the heavens and the earth, the seeds that would grow if given little information from the body and soul of man. Ideally on our own lands, but there's a spectrum afforded there of a world that whose infinite grace affords us ever progressively easier steps, though funded by the very fullness of the living images of how man is supposed to live in this world. See, it's getting a little brighter. It's gorgeous, just so inspired. Haven't uh, actually started the day this early for a long time, so it's great. <laughs> a lot of benefits since I broke away from FE and started AFE, anti flat earth uh, way of thinking. Because I, I realized that in hindsight, my thinking was always anti flat earth, even when I was in the flat earth. I didn't think it was, and I guess the flat earth was anti my way of thinking. It just really depends on how you look at it, um, which I think is humane way of thinking. And um, I'm going to qualify that a little bit by saying or repeating something a Qigong master once told me. I didn't practice it very long. I don't claim, you know, any special uh, um, accreditation or abilities in any art form, but I, I was lucky enough, in every sense of that word, to be under the tutelage of this, a man who showed me that he was a master, demonstrated to my satisfaction. You can only take my word for it or not. In fact, I would suggest you don't. But for the sake of this discussion, perhaps just keep an open mind. And then subject it to violent scrutiny once I finish talking, as is my want. Um, but he said to me, said to a lot of us, that the real things, the true things, are never the popular and the jazzy things. And I found that to really bear out. In fact, I've despaired of ever finding anything that's good that's also popular. Now, a lot of people are going to shake their heads on reflex when I say this, but nothing popular in the world is all that good. It's just repackaged shite. And nobody has to regulate or coerce most people to do that. Now, the chemical companies, for instance, go into your broom closet, go into your um, where you keep your cleaning supplies. Most of them are just rehashed cocktails of some of the same chemicals. Same shit, different turd. And that's just about most of human literature, most of the videos on YouTube, most of the films produced by Hollywood, most of the cults, the New Age, Eckhart Tolle, Louise Hay. I mean, this stuff is really low-level, repackaged um, cults. Cults, as I say, of people who are just just rehashing the cults that came into Christianity, the cults that came out of Christianity, Judaism, Islam. The, I mean, we have all these so-called major religions, but they're spawned themselves from thousands of cults of death and violence that have intermingled for tens of thousands of years. That none of the problems in the world are new, and none of the goodness of the world is new. But possessed of some little bit of that goodness, we can conceive of a sufficient home for a child. You know, the Anastasia books by Vladimir McGray are never going to be Oprah's book of the month. Right? Now, let's look at this for a moment. Nothing popular is really all that substantial. It's true. In fact, in order to be popular, it can't be substantial. Because human beings are insatiable for things that are vapid and things that only look substantial. 
It's not enough, except in a dehumanized society, to have some really wonderful proofs of a flat earth. I think of pea brain. I think of insanity is sanity. Great. Take nothing away. Awesome. We're all of us, me included. I, I, I can't produce a global, if you'll excuse the term, um, address of everything relevant to human existence. These are standout, exceptional filmmakers and researchers. And so many others that, if you're watching this and you're familiar with the Flat Earth, you could probably sight, rattle off a lot more than I could. I'm just, and I make a video, I've got so much going on in my head. I don't always, uh, I can't always recite all the, the great FE researchers. And for every one that I mention, I'm sure there's a hundred more, right? So, but the best that we can do in the formats provided us, in every format, every medium of technocratic communication comes with constraints upon the primary function of man, which is the cellular and social communication worthy of our native humanity. And that's a cost that's always being paid. It's a tax, if you will, as part of a system of taxation whose job at metaphysical and governmental levels is to tax man and nature as much as possible in order to extract as violently as, as possible as many resources from man and nature as possible. In order to do that, it's essential to have man need and want to do that himself. And to do that, you have to dehumanize man. And so that all is operating all the time. That's just a given. It's, it's been that way for, for a long, long time. Longer than most of us could remember. And it's essential it gets passed down through our families that through the people we trust the most. So the breaking of trust is one of the most violent things that have happened in human heritage. So in order for something to be popular and to be deemed relevant according to the constraints of any kind of subject from medicine to economics to the flat earth, it, in order for it to seem relevant, in order for it to ever become popular, it can't be as substantial as it needs to be for human beings to regain or be restored of their native capacity for thought, and particularly for their recourse to the scientific instruments of the poetry of every organ of body and soul, and its native correspondence, its functional reciprocity with the heavens and the earth, with the seeds and the mountains and the clouds. This is a language uh, spoken by mother and child, spoken by the womb of a mother, that of a womb that forms one whole totality with an eternal cosmos. And the images that come with that, the living images that remain to us, that's not a moon, by the way, that's the stop sign. But how would you know? Um, These images have been under attack, they've been corrupted. The, the changing of our sense of the flat aroundness of the earth is just one symptom of the corruption of the images of man, the brain of man, the blood of man, the family traditions of man, the, the humanity of man, the family of man, the customs of man. And indeed, so distorted and so intelligent and strategic, this distortion, it knows it has to keep spawning new cults, all of which emerge in the name of exhuming some greater or purer truth about what life is about here or in the next world. None of that is new. The fall of the Baal cult for some people and the emergence of the Flat Earth cult is not something that's causing the highest priesthood any kind of nervousness. Indeed, they plan for exactly that contingency, precisely because the truth, like a weed, is always going to sprout through the cement of human depravity. And as soon as that weed comes up, there's someone walking along, picking it out, maybe finding it's cannabis or some drug that can sell really well. Maybe it has some medicinal properties. And so it goes and goes and goes until we deal with the conditions and images that are sufficient to live without suffering, which is the only logical basis of anything even remotely sane or intelligent in the world, then we're just going to keep repackaging 
by our own agency, the same chemicals that have been depriving us of our humanity for so many thousands of years. Whether we call it a, a, a truth chemical, or a politically powerful chemical, or a religious conversion, or a salvation, whether you call it Christ or Mohammed, whether you call it the truth of the flat earth, whatever it may be. Oh, we see the skies opening up here. This light on my camera is performing no function whatsoever, so I'm going to turn this off and uh, just going to enjoy my walk in the quiet morning hours. But I remember what my Qigong master said. The popular will never be the real things, the true things, the real things. Don't take this as a criticism, anyone. Take this as a respect to your intelligence. You don't believe any more than I did that the, that the Flat Earth Movement is going to take you anywhere you need to go. The idea of calling someone a truther is to me a barbaric distortion of our language. That's all. all you have to do is be a truther and then truth equals liberation and we're all going to have our consciousness awakening and conscious evolution and all that stuff. It's like being fed repackaged turds that we, we shape, we, we, we eat and we drink and then we shape little turd bubbles with our mouths with our brains euphoric because somebody's giving us a new cult and the endless spawning of cults. Every successive generation is just absolutely enthusiastic and terrified by the world at once. It's not enough. Look at the previous videos, the couple two that I just made, and uh, if you're interested, and I'm always qualifying my terms, I'm always fleshing out these thoughts that I believe, I wouldn't make these videos if I didn't, are valuable and will be only to a very few people. And this, there's one song here, there's a life, and it finds people, it finds our mouths, it finds our hearts in its own perfect, infinite way. But uh, it'll only be, be a few people who hear this song from my lips, and it's only been a very few people whose song I've heard. And yet, for me, everyone betrays a a trauma and a rage that is lived out in their lives and and through that and what's worse than that I should say is an aversion to feeling things that are necessary to restore that conscious capacity for life whose loss lay at the source of all our suffering to begin with it's not just metaphysical it's not just esoteric for our ancestors this was two plus two seed to mouth food to soul 